welcome back to high school. So, Armin's spin-off episode has just been released and in this video I'm going to be playing it. So, in high school, I have to say I wasn't a huge fan of Armin. I would say that he was more like a friend to my candy, but honestly I didn't really see him a lot. I didn't really get to know him. But I'm going to be playing this episode anyway. I think it'll be really fun to see some of the old characters, especially if Lysander's in it. I'm so looking forward to seeing him. And also for anyone who's not going to be playing this spin-off, um, hopefully it helps you guys be able to see what happens in it. Before I start, I just want to say a big, big thank you to all my Ko-Fi supporters. You guys are amazing. And it's because of your help that I'm able to bring you all videos like this. At the moment, I'm not too sure how many APs this episode is going to take. But before I start the episode, I will add in a little note letting you know how, how many APs and also any additional gold that we need to spend for it. And just as a little side note, I'm probably not going to get the illustration in this playthrough. I didn't get it when I was playing through Lysanders. Um, even though when I did play Lysanders, I kind of picked all the bad options because they were the most interesting ones and I wanted to see what the responses were. So I'll probably end up doing the same in this playthrough and they're probably going to be the bad answers, but that's okay. I kind of find them more interesting, so I think it'll be fun. Just as a quick note before the rest of the video, the episode cost me 1,614 APs to play through and 205 gold. All right, so now that that's all said and done, let's get into it. All right, here we go. Spin off to the Super Twins. By putting my hand on the costume that Rosa had made me for Supercon, all of the memories from that day came flooding back to me. And what a day that was. I had a really nice time with Armin. All right, let's go. Once the spin off episode is unlocked, all your dialogues will be free. Hmm, I thought they changed that, but okay. Your actions will not have any impact on your main story. Your lover meters will not be impacted. You can replay the episode as many times as you want. It is possible to play a spin-off even if you are currently playing the main root episode. Attention to fully enjoy this special episode is advised to have already played through episode 37. That is fine. I have played all 40 episodes, so let's go. Mum's right. This room is a real mess. I should probably do some cleaning up. Okay, I don't know why they said at the beginning that once you pay for the episode, you can play it for free because it's charging me every time I click. But okay, anyway, we'll figure that out later. And I have so many clothes. I could wear a different outfit every day of the week and still not reach the back of my closet. Yet you are still paying for more outfits. Fantastic. But I'm not allowed to go out until everything is cleaned up. Okay, let's get to work. I've started separating the dirty laundry from the clean clothes. Even Mr. Ferreira's class seems to go by faster than these chores. A colourful outfit in a heap near my bed has caught my attention. I unfolded it carefully. I can't believe I left it lying on the floor. I really like it, after all. With Rose's support, Armin helped me put it together. I have never thought this was possible coming from him. In fact, this was the outfit I was wearing during that moment that was so special to me. It was a few weeks ago. Things were still tense between Alexei and Armin after he got arrested. <laughs> Oops. Armin had used his computer skills to illegally break into the city archives. He was trying to find out more about their biological parents without telling his brother, which made Ale Alexei angry, of course. To make matters worse, Armin didn't seem to understand why Alexei was so mad. Bringing my boyfriend and my best friend back together wasn't going to be easy. I didn't expect to get any help, and I definitely hadn't expected that it would all begin thanks to Violet. Hey friends, who is this? Oh, it's Violet, okay. Why is this at 0%? Anyway. Hey Armin, don't you like comics? Is the Pope Catholic? <laughs> um... <laughs> He means yes, but as always, he wanted to complicate things rather than giving a simple answer. I don't know. I guess I do talk about them all the time. I'm sure that I've read the new Ultimate Edition of Spider-Man more times than I've opened my history book. So it seems obvious to me, but not to you. Poor Violet. God, just say yes. Sure, sorry. Yes, I'm... Hey now, don't let my moron brother walk all over you. Don't apologise to him just because he's socially inept. Walk all 
over to her. I was joking. There's no need to be mean. Since his arrest, the relationship seems to have gone sour. Armin has tried apologising, but there's still palpable tension between them. I understand that Alexei can sometimes get annoyed by his brother's carefree attitude, but I know that Armin didn't mean any harm. I, I, oh, oh, poor Violet. I promised myself I wouldn't get involved with them anymore, but these two are impossible. They start arguing over the slightest thing. And today, poor Violet is the one paying for it. Violet was just trying to be polite and ask a few like comments. Armin was just trying, comments? <laughs> comics, where did that come from? Armin was just trying to be funny. Violet, don't you like comics too? <laughs> Armin was just trying to be funny. <laughs> um, I don't know. Let's go with A. I'm on Violet's side. I feel bad for her hair. It was just a rhetorical question. Well, you'd understand this kind of thing if you listened in class from time to time, like in English class. Great, so I'm stupid now. Oh no, <laughs> that's not the right one to pick. I do happen to know what a rhetorical question is. I let out a long, involuntary sigh. What were you saying, Violet? I saw something on TV, on the local news last night, about Marvel. They were talking about a travelling exhibit that... What? What exhibit? <laughs> oh god, okay. Was it the exhibit where they show the actual costumes from the latest movies and original comic storyboards? Why was that on the local news? Oh, come on, let her finish. Yes, that's it. There are costumes and accessories, I suppose. Lots of original artwork as well. Did I hear accessories? I hope you're not planning a shopping trip without me. <laughs> sure, you can just come along, Rosa. I'm sure you'll have a great time. She popped out of nowhere. No, Rosa, she was talking about props from the Marvel movies, like Thor's hammer and Captain America's shield. Oh, I see. Isn't that more Armin's kind of thing? How do you know so much about it? <laughs> Maybe because they're twins and they talk about stuff? Well, Armin practically learned how to read with comics, so I learned a few things hearing him gab on about it. Shh, let Violet finish. <laughs> oh, wow. Violet still seemed nervous that Armin was the one telling the others to shut up. Oh, um, I don't really know anything else about it. What I do know is that the exhibit is coming to town this weekend. It's a pop-up exhibit, so it shouldn't be here any longer than a week. This weekend? Like, this coming weekend? <laughs> Yes, Armin. Wow, this is going to be great. Thanks, Violet. I love you. Wh what? <laughs> Armin got carried away in his excitement and hugged Violet, lifting her up from the ground a few inches. She turned bright red. Aww. Okay, let's go, Airy. There's no time to waste. Huh? Um, we can't run off to the exhibit now. We've got class. I'm just going to go to the class in my big flowing dress. What's well, on dress? It's a skirt, but you know, I don't think it's really school appropriate. Of course not, but we don't have much time to invite everyone. So there's Alexi, Rosa, Violet, and you're coming for sure. Okay, but like, where's Lysander? I just want to say hi. <laughs> awesome, thanks for asking our opinion. This is a one-time opportunity. No time for chit-chat. We'll meet for coffee after school to work out the details. And as for us, Eri, let's go try to get everyone else on board. He took off running. Well, I'll try to catch up with him. As I was leaving, I saw that Rosa and Violet looked dumbstruck. I'm not sure they're that interested in the exhibit. As for Alexi, I distinctly heard him mumble that there was no way he'd take part in his brother's whims. I really need to get these guys to make up. Alright, find Armin. I finally managed to catch up with him. Armin, wait up. Ah, there you are. So, I want to find Nathaniel first, if possible. I let him borrow lots of Deadpool, and I didn't think it was his thing, but he keeps asking for more. So my opinion isn't worth anything. Are you moving a bit too fast? And what if I wasn't available? Um, I'm just going to see. I want to see what he says. <laughs> oh, did you have something planned? Well, no, I'm just saying that I would have liked you to have asked what I thought. Oh, he's excited. Come on. Oh, sorry. You wanted to come, didn't you? Of course. I can't wait to go out with the whole gang. Of course, as long as I can choose where to go out to next. Yes, even though I'd have preferred for it to be just the two of us. No, I want it to be the whole gang, so I'm going to say A. I knew it. You're going to love it. And next time we can go to an arcade. I couldn't help smiling. He's adorable. 
Yeah, I did sort of get carried away. I promise I'll go and ask the others later if they want to go. Awesome. I'm sure it'll be more fun if lots of us go. I thought again about Alexi, who seemed annoyed. Don't you think this would be a good time to apologise to Alexi? You mean actually apologise? Nah, I'll admit that I perhaps got carried away, but if he's really mad about that, that's his problem. If not apologise, at least talk to him. It's just that I really want you two to work things out. He's your twin brother, after all. If it means that much to you, I'll go and see him. Good. In the meantime, could you help me invite everyone? <laughs> yes, if it's no trouble, of course. I'm so excited to see everyone. After all, you're the specialist in finding people everywhere at school. Well, you're right. Even though I'm not sure this is such a useful skill outside of Sweden Morris. Okay, I'll do it. Just then, the bell rang to start classes. Done. What do we have now? Again? Art class. We shouldn't be late. Patrick is nice, but let's not push it. Go to art class. Armin and I headed off to class. I heard some familiar voices talking about us behind our backs. Are they actually following us around now? What do they want with me? <sighs> Who is it? Is it Amber? <sighs> when is her loser boyfriend just going to shut up? Here we go. I know. He's giving me a headache going on and on about that stupid exhibit. Why doesn't he spend that time making some friends instead? Oh, that's right. He can't. Oh, shut up, Lee. How many friends do you have? One now that Charlotte's gone? Not as long as he's going out with the queen of losers. Tee hee hee. Oh my god, this just reminds me how much I hated Amber and how much I still don't really like her in university life. They giggled together in chorus. I don't intend to start playing their game. Apparently, you're taking advantage of Charlotte not being here to put together a comedy act. Great job. You shouldn't dwell on your failures. <laughs> oh, let's do that one. By the way, when does the show start? Ha ha, very funny. You're just hilarious as well. Good comeback, Amber. I'm simply stunned, but I'm doing my best. I'm obviously not at your level of humour. That's right. Well, um, go be annoying somewhere else. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lee, when you run out of ideas, just shut it, okay? You don't seem to be quite there yet. I'll let you two work on it. Amber surely understands sarcasm. Science makes great progress every day, apparently. I turned around and they started arguing. <laughs> I picked up the pace so I wouldn't have to listen to them anymore. I, I've got better things to do. Don't we all? <laughs> Before going into Patrick, Patrick's classroom, Armin kissed me on the cheek, then went towards Violet to ask if I... If he could sit by her. Okay. She looked terrified, just like every time a boy talked to her, but I know her well and she really likes Alexi and Armin. As always, the class was pretty rowdy. Everyone was sitting down, but there was still a lot of chatting. Two rows behind me, I could distinctly hear Armin and Violet's full conversation. Don't you think that Marvel has far surpassed DC? You can see it in their latest movies. Um, I, I mean, <laughs> I prefer manga in general, and... Oh, well, that's okay. Did you know that the Japanese redid lots of comics in the manga style? Like, there's an Iron Man anime. So you don't even need to choose one style. Say, it looks like you've got a lot of energy today, Armin. <laughs> What's all this enthusiasm about? Violet didn't see Patrick coming and she jumped a few inches out of her chair. Of course, Armin didn't lose his cool. There's a Marvel Comics ex exhibit. Too bad we never talk about that in class. That's just what we need. <laughs> I think I'd rather shave my head than go to that loser exhibit. Are you talking about that temporary exhibit coming to town? Actually, I suggested it to the principal as an extracurricular field trip. That's cool. Unfortunately, oh, okay, that's not cool. There wasn't enough time for us to organize it, pro organize it properly. What were you saying about your beautiful blonde curls? <laughs> Amber pretended to look for some makeup in her bag. Oh, little Freya. <laughs> really? We were supposed to go, but it's not about classical painting. Not really, but it's what you might call pop culture. Still, the history of comics is part of art history, going back more than 100 years. Superman himself is more than 80 years old. The characters and themes in comics are closely related to the time period and the current ev events of the day. For example, Captain America was a symbol of the fight against fascism. In the very first issue, we see him punching Hitler right in the face. This isn't really the goal of this class, but Mr. Parades could talk to you about it for hours. Um, are we really going? 
Shut up, Melody. Are we really going to talk about comics? Shouldn't we continue on the lesson about Dali? Oh, Melody. Whenever it's not a traditional academic subject, she gets flustered. Of course we are. We're a bit ahead of schedule, so I see no reason why we couldn't take a slight detour from today's lesson. <sighs> this guy's so cool. Best teacher. I saw Armin's face light up. This was going to be one of the few classes he'd pay attention to. Patrick started telling us all about the history of comics, and I was surprised that I paid attention to it all. It's so nice talking about modern subjects in class for a change. Experts refer to the different time periods of the history of comics as ages, from the Platinum Age in the 1880s to the Modern Age in our time. Comics were originally short comic strips you'd find at the end of newspapers. Between the two world wars, they became so popular that they were bundled together into comic books. The Platinum Age was actually more like a Stone Age of comics, where authors experimented with the genre. The first recurring characters appeared, but comics were still limited to the last few pages of magazines. They started becoming more popular in the next age. Who can tell me which famous hero marked the beginning of the Golden Age? Patrick had barely finished asking his question when Armin jumped up with his hand in the air. Superman! <laughs> it was Superman! That's right, I see that you're really excited about this subject. You could say that again. Armin looks like he's in heaven. Yes, but the idea is that first you raise your hand. Oh my god, Melody, shut up. Then Mr. Patrick calls on you. <gasps> oh, she's so annoying. Okay. <laughs> Oh, come on. You're just jealous that you didn't have the right answer for once, <laughs> Hermione. <laughs> That's what she reminds me of right now. Ouch. He's not wrong. Okay, okay. This is a rich subject that only gets added to every day, so it's fine if you don't have all the answers. I think, I think rather that Melody isn't all that interested in it. That's all. During the Golden Age, comics were ma mass-produced and sold really well. Not even the war could slow them down. The stories were fleshed out and comedic characters were replaced with real heroes, who were sometimes symbols of resistance and of the people. Still, the artwork took second stage since the stories were told mostly through long text that filled up the whole frame. The layout was also fairly simple, following a model named after a kitchen appliance. Melody, could you care to guess which one? Um, I think it's a... Waffle iron, fondue pot, microwave. I have no idea. Were microwaves even invented back then? I don't know. Let's go this one. With all the squares aligned in a grid, I'd say a waffle iron. Yes! That's exactly right. That was totally just a fluke, but I'll take it. Hey, I'm not that bad at this game. A waffle iron grid is the simplest way to arrange a comic strip page. This comic style evolved during the Silver Age. That was a time for experimentation. Lots of writers like Jim Steranko and Frank Miller also took inspiration from artistic movements we've already studied this year, like natural, naturalism and surrealism, but also from literature. The character of the Hulk, for example, was inspired by a well-known novel. Wasn't he Nathaniel? Oh, wasn't he Nathaniel? Okay, uh, I think I know which one. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I suppose it must be Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, right? Hi, Nathaniel. <laughs> yes, that's exactly the one I thought. Good, and speaking of the Hulk, it's interesting to note that the style of comics was sometimes constrained by the means of production. Let's see if you can guess. The Hulk wasn't always green. Originally, he was. Armin raised his hand again, but this time I did too. Red, yellow, grey. <laughs> I have no idea. Oh my god. Let's go grey. That's it! Oh my god! I'm so good at this! <laughs> go me! I saw Armin grin at me. Okay, don't get too excited, Armin. I just guessed. The printing paper was of poor quality, and the original grey was uneven and hard to reproduce, so the Hulk was soon printed in green. That's funny. It was also for budgetary and technical reasons that The Simpsons turned yellow. It must have cost less than green. Whoever wrote this episode must have been having such a great time with all their pop culture knowledge. Patrick continued talking about the different ages in the history of comics and the evolution of their graphic style. 
It's fun having such an interactive class. Lots of the students got in on it. Okay, I have to say I'm not that interested in it, but anyway, let's keep going. Armin answered lots of other questions, but this started a sort of competition. <laughs> it was Melody who tried to keep up. All right, this I'm interested in. I can't help but smile, seeing Armin having so much fun. The bell signals the end of the class. Oh no, already. We were having so much fun. It's not fair. I want another question. Oh, God. Oh no, you had your chance. Admit once and for all that I'm the most knowledgeable on this subject. Hmm. Come on, Lee. Let's get out of this class full of nerds. The students started leaving the classroom. I'd better catch up with the others if I want to invite them to the exhibit, as I promised Armin. As I was leaving the classroom, I noticed Armin glancing sideways at Alexi, who was talking with Violet and Rosa. It almost looks like he wants to go towards them, but he's holding back. I want things to get worked out. Armin will have to do his part. Go ahead, what are you waiting for? Look, there's Alexi over there. <laughs> Don't be shy, I'm so going with thee. Oh, hey, look. <laughs> yeah, I know, we just came out of the same classroom. <laughs> Thanks for pointing out the obvious, Airy. <laughs> Okay, he obviously needs a little help. I pushed Armin ahead of me, and he stood a few seconds in silence with Rosa, Alexi, and Violet. Say something. Did you want something, Armin? <laughs> well, um, Aerie made me realize that I sort of got carried away earlier about the exhibit. I love comics, and I thought you'd enjoy it. Yeah, you completely forgot to ask us what we thought about it. You're always like this. You don't care at all about anyone else as long as you're having fun. What? No, that's not it. I, I've had it. <laughs> do whatever you want, but do it without me. I'm not coming. I've got better things to do. <gasps> Alexi, stop. Rosa glanced briefly at me. She also has experience with the twins' mood swings, and I think it makes her sad like it does me. I'm not sure she's all that into the exhibit, but I'm sure she'll make an effort to come, if only just to help patch things up between them. Are you really going to be that difficult? Because the exhibit seems cool. I'll at least talk it over with Lee. It'll be a good opportunity for him to see you all somewhere besides the store for once. Rosa gave a hard stare towards Violet to try to get her to answer. I'm actually sort of interested in the exhibit. I hope there will be some nice art books. I love flipping through them for hours and working on my drawing skills. Too bad you don't want to come, Alexi. I thought you'd enjoy going with all of us. Yeah, I don't know. It's not really my thing. Whether she's doing it on purpose or not, Violet seems to be playing the game. He really likes spending time with her, so this is a great argument to try and get him to come. Rosa then stared over at me, using my telepathic skills. I understand that it's my turn to say something. Let's see, what could convince Alexi to come with us? Yeah, it's too bad, because there's going to be... <laughs> Kent in there! <laughs> Guys, perhaps. Oh my god. I have to, I have to say Kenton. <laughs> oh, he's coming too. Oh, immediately he perks up. Yes, he's free and he also likes comics. So you already had the time to invite him. Um, <laughs> awesome. I didn't know that he liked comics. Um, I actually have no idea, but a little lie never did any harm. I just hope that I'll see Kenton today before Alexi does. Well, if Violet, Rosa and Kenton are coming, fine. It would be a shame to miss out on that. Uh-huh, sure, Alexi. Perfect, we did it. I winked discreetly at Rosa. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hello, Kenton. I guess you're coming along with us. You have no choice. You guys look like you're plotting something. What's going on? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> what horrible luck. Why did Kenton just have to show up right after I told my little white lie? I, let's hope he'll be understanding. They're strongly insisting that I go to this da this darn Marvel exhibit this weekend. I didn't think you'd be coming too. Naturally, you'd never say no to Eri. <laughs> About that. <laughs> All right, um, well, Kenton looks puzzled, as he should be. I should give him a signal. I take a step backward so Alexi can't see me, and I silently mouth the words, I'll explain. I never promised anything. <gasps> Kenton, why do you do this? Why are you like this? Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> I'm so disappointed. It depends on when exactly it is. I was planning on going to the gym this weekend. All weekend, Kenton, really. But I'm always down for hanging out with you all. 
did he really not get it? Or is he doing this on purpose? In any case, he's really not helping me out here. Alexi looked at me. <laughs> Alexi looked at me and raised one eyebrow. Oops. If you come along with me to this thing, I'll forever be grateful. I get the feeling that Airy has already decided that I'm coming. Mm-hmm. Really? You can count me in then. <laughs> that was easy. Okay. Who else is coming besides you five? Actually, with Airy, we were going to invite just about everyone. We could go get a coffee after class to work out the details, if that's okay. They all agreed, and I left with Armin. Alexi got that I'd lied about Kenton and looks grumpy. So much for keeping my bluff. I'll talk to him about it later. We'll get it done faster if we split up, won't we? Oh, yes. You look disappointed. Did you want to spend time with me? Sort of, yeah. Does this make up for it? As he said this, he took my face in his hands and gave me a long kiss. The softness of his lips and his fingers sliding behind my neck make me shiver. How can I stay upset with someone who kisses so well? I could have stayed like this for hours, but we're standing in the middle of the hallway. We're blocking the way and other students are stepping around us whistling. Come on, don't you have anything better to do? We should avoid doing this in places that are so busy. That's an idea. Don't worry, Airy. I'll pick up where I left off later, when there aren't so many jealous people around. After one last quick kiss, I went off on my own. <gasps> oh my god, look who I found! There's Castile. I wonder if he'd be interested. He so will not be, but who cares? I don't think he's really into comics, is he? It's always hard to tell with him. Now, I'm not sure if I should... Hey, Airy. He startled me. Oh, hi, Castile. What's going on? I can see you're up to something, but you don't want to tell me about it. <laughs> really? What makes you say that? I don't know. Maybe because you're always up to something fishy. Mm-hmm. Actually. I'm sure you're not interested. Forget about it. Want to come to the Marvel exhibit? The one we were talking about in class. I wanted to invite you to the Marvel exhibit, but I don't think it's bad enough for a bad boy like you. I really want to think that one is probably bad and he's probably going to get angry, but I want to pick it because it's funny. <laughs> oh, really? What makes me such a bad boy? I don't know. Hanging around in seedy bars. You don't know anything about me. <laughs> there are some nice bars if you get out of downtown. Okay, Castile. They don't need to be seedy. <laughs> but they are anyway. But you're right. Exhibits aren't really my thing. Oh, well. Too bad. And knowing you, I bet you still have half the school to invite. Haha, <laughs> that's right. See you later. He was never going to come anyway. Oh, look. Who do we have here? I spotted Nathaniel, Priya, and Kim at the back of the class. Now's the time to kill three birds with one stone. Or, instead of inviting them to an exhibit, we could, you know, encourage Nathaniel to make some better life choices. <laughs> now that we know what his future holds. But whatever, let's do this, I suppose. Hey guys, can we help you? Are you looking for someone? <laughs> I'm always looking for someone. I'm looking for everyone, actually. There's this Marvel exhibit, the one we talked about in art class. Do you want to go, all of us together, this weekend? I bet you'll like it, Nathaniel. Armin told me you're a huge Deadpool fan. Not necessarily a fan, but let's just say that he let me borrow the beginning of the story and I like it so far. All right. I should have known that Armin was getting carried away too quickly. So, no? Yes, of course. I'd like to get together outside of school for a change. And an exhibit counts as culture, doesn't it? If you think you're cultured, Nathaniel, that's great. Same. I don't really know much about it, but I'm curious. You didn't see the last Avengers movie either. There's a talking raccoon. So awesome. Haha, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> There is, I swear. Does that mean you're coming with us, Kim? I never thought that Kim would be interested, but okay. I don't really know much about comics, but why not? Anyway, I don't have anything planned for this weekend. I told them to meet at the cafe after class, and I left just as Nathaniel was trying to explain the plot, plot of Deadpool to Kim. Good luck with that, mate. Oh my god. There's the... Even though he's more into writing, I wonder if he likes comics. 
Oh my god, this is gonna make me so sad. I miss him. What in the? Hey! I didn't have the time to move out of the way, and he ran right into me. Eric, what are you doing? You're standing in the middle of the way. It's dangerous, don't you think? Oh my god, I'm so sad. Now I miss you. I can ask you the same question. How did you not see me if I'm right in the middle of the way? Oh, um, I guess I wasn't paying attention. Please forgive me. Is everything okay? Oh yes, fine. Actually, maybe you can help me. If you had to get... Excuse you? If you had to get rid of a body, how would you go about it? Um, are you sure everything's okay? I get some acid in a plastic tub. I heard that pigs could help with that. Oh my god. Oh my god, these are great. Okay, B or C. Hmm, let's go B. Hmm. Oh, damn it. That's not the right answer because it's not the right time period. So, what are we talking about? You're starting to scare me. Don't worry. I'm not thinking about killing anyone. I'm just looking for ideas for a new crime story. Okay. Nathaniel told me about a creative writing project for young writers. We have to try and write a story several pages long in one month. It intrigued me and I started writing about a week ago. Don't you usually write songs? That seems like an enormous challenge. What's your story about? I already told you it's a crime story. Um, I don't know. Let's choose B. It is, but it's not a whole novel. And if I didn't have the time in high school, when would I ever have the time to do it? I don't know. By the way, did you want to ask me something? I want to ask you multiple things, but I will settle for one thing. All right, how would you like to go to the exhibit we were talking about in class this weekend? He probably wasn't listening. Okay, he was. <laughs> Thanks, but I have, but I practically have no free time with all this writing. I really want to meet this challenge. Well, that sucks. Of course. I mean, no, good for him. <laughs> I completely understand. Good luck then. Damn it, I wanted to see more of him. Okay, no, wait, this is arm and spit off, so stop. Thank you, Airy. Hopefully next time. I'll count on it. Oh, I just kind of walked away. <laughs> oh my god, that's probably the last time I'm going to see him. <laughs> so sad. Iris is sitting at a table. She looks like she's studying. I sat down next to her and whispered so I wouldn't get on the bookworm's bad side. S Iris, how are you? Fine, why? Does it look like I'm not fine? People tell me that I look upset when I'm studying. Aww. <laughs> I don't know if she looks upset, but rather that it, than it looks like she's trying to decipher hieroglyphics. Um, no, don't worry about it. Are you free this weekend to go with us to the Marvel exhibit we were talking about in class? I don't know if you're into that sort of thing. Oh yeah, thanks for the invitation. I actually am into it. Cool. Me too. Oh god, where did you come from? Me too! I can't wait to go to the exhibit. When are we going? Oh, really? Iris and I jumped in surprise. How long had Melody been hiding behind the bookshelves spying on our conversation? Um, I don't know. We're going to decide on the time after class. We were all going to meet at the cafe, actually. You're not invited! Oh, Melody, I didn't see you there. Iris acted like nothing had happened. So, you like comics? I didn't think you did in class, so... But I do. I don't know if you know. But I just love Ted Pool. Huh? You mean Deadpool? <laughs> Deadpool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. I must have stuttered. I love Deadpool. Oh my god, Melody, stop! You're embarrassing. Yeah, sure. She must have heard me talking with Nathaniel, and now she's pretending she knows all about it. I hadn't thought about her, but now that she has invited herself to come. Oh, and after all, what if she enjoys it? I have to run, guys. Don't forget to meet up at the cafe tonight, okay? No problem. I'll be there. I left discreetly. Now I'm off to the cafe. I arrived in front of the cafe. I feel like I got here fast, but everyone's already here. We settled at two large tables that Armin had saved for us. Well, I didn't think this little outing would attract so many people. That's good. That way, if there's nothing to see, we can still have a great time together. Hear ye, hear ye. Your attention, please. Everyone stopped talking and a royal silence fell on our group. I asked Airy to invite you here because I don't have everyone's phone numbers and <laughs> I didn't message anyone. I just literally found them. Rosa rolled her eyes, hinting at Armin to keep it short. Anyway, are we going on Friday or Saturday? 
Oh, how thoughtful of you. We have to go, but at least we get to choose when. Wow, Alexi. Alexi, don't be so grumpy. You already agreed to come, so you can't back out now. Yeah, you don't know him like I do. You'll see. If he gives up on one thing, you'll be sure he's already thinking about how to get ahead. What exactly will I see? Stop being so paranoid and smile for a change. We're not dragging you off to the gallows. We talked a few minutes about everyone's various obligations and we ended up deciding on going on Saturday afternoon. We would meet in front of the park. So, Saturday's cool with everyone. Is that your final answer? It is, Regis. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> really, Iris? <laughs> You're easily entertained. Okay, perfect. So that leaves us with enough time to talk about the costumes. The... The what? <laughs> so? I can see where this is going. If we're go just going to have another art fair like at school, you can count me out. Um, I don't know if I... Uh, I mean, I'm not really comfortable with... I told you. He gives you a choice and then immediately forces something onto you. Typical Armin. Calm down, guys. He hasn't even explained what he wants. What do we have to do? We're going to a Marvel exhibit as a group. Wouldn't it be fun to go in costumes? Well, common mortals say costume, but I say cosplay. All right, Armin. <laughs> Given how many of us are going, we could easily do the Avengers. Or wait, even better, wait for it, the X-Men. I think we can rent a real <laughs> wheelchair so someone could do Professor X. <laughs> well, not me, of course. Yeah. I don't know about this. Even with your explanation, it doesn't sound any better. I mean, for the play, we had to play the part if we didn't want to fail the assignment. But now... I didn't sign up for this. We're going to look completely ridiculous. Oh, come on, have some fun. I'm sure you like dressing up for Halloween, so it's the same thing, right? Not really. I do fashion, which has nothing to do with costumes. Anyway, it's just an exhibit, not some huge convention for fans. We'd stick out like sore thumbs. I don't know enough about comics to wear a costume of some character. Oh yeah, not even Deadpool? <laughs> not even Tedpool? <laughs> How did you know that? Oh my god, she's a stalker. <laughs> How did you know that I, I read the first few chapters at most? Nathaniel seems bothered by the fact that Melody knows so much about his reading habits. <laughs> Poor thing, she'd do anything for him to notice her. Gross. And it will obviously have to be a male character. Go ahead and try to find a superhero in costume that isn't half naked. It's like an RPG's Priya. The fewer clothes you're wearing, the stronger your armor is. <laughs> Makes so much sense. Armin burst out laughing. Of course I was being sarcastic, but I was sure it would make him smile. Hmm, what solid logic. That said, I'd go for Wonder Woman. With her last movie, she'd become an incontestably strong female figure. Ah, Wonder Woman? She's awesome. But I could never walk around in a skin-tight bodysuit. Never. Ugh, if you guys... You guys are such wimps. Capucine? When did Capucine get here? Who invited her? Iris, what do you think? Um, I'll talk it over with Samuel, okay? Or you go do that, then. Oh, I wouldn't mind, but I wouldn't want to be the only one doing it, though. Ugh, I see how it is. You're all too worried about what other people think. Who cares if we look stupid in our costumes? The important thing is that we have fun, right? While Armin went off on a tirade to try to get the others to play along, Rosa leaned in toward me. Ugh, did you know about this? You could have warned us. I just found out at the same time as you. Seriously, it's fine being really into something, but this is getting ridiculous. He could have told you about it. Knowing Armin, he must have thought it wasn't that important. I know, but it is. Well, I mean, you don't need to get involved in absolutely everything he does. But this involves you, right? I suppose so. You should talk to him after this is over. This isn't going to patch things up with Alexi. Especially because I'm starting to see things more and more from Alexi's point of view. Armin is usually very attentive, but sometimes he goes off on something and forgets all about me. Don't be like that, sweetie. I'm sure he'll apologize soon. You love him so much because he's so full of surprises, right? You're right. We'll see what he says about it later. I stayed pretty quiet while the others talk things out. I don't really know what I think, but the idea of wearing costumes didn't seem to win anyone over. 
After a while, we said goodbye. In the end, I think Armin pretty much managed to convince no one. Aww. Everyone went their separate ways and Armin stayed with me to walk me home. I stayed quiet while Armin kept rattling on while we walked. What a bunch of wimps. Maybe they're scared, but the two of us will find costumes that are going to be so awesome they'll regret not having one. Ha! Armin, you do realise that you forgot to tell me all about the costumes before announcing it to everyone else, right? Oh, um, now that you mention it, don't let this become a habit. I'm sorry, I got so carried away by the idea, I must not have been thinking about anything else. About anyone else. <laughs> it's easy to apologise after the fact. You're right, but I promise that I'll make an effort to tell you about my evil plans before I unleash them. I'm serious. So am I. After all, you're the person I care about most. I smiled, feeling my cheeks flush with contentment. But just picture it. Half the class dressed up as mutants straight out of Professor X's mansion. You're impossible. <laughs> I really hope you'll do what you'll want to join me, Eri. What do you say? No. <laughs> Please say yes. Only if we can get the others to play along. Absolutely. I love dressing up. Okay, because everyone else is probably going to say absolutely, I'm going to say this one. <laughs> just to see what he says. I don't really want to have everyone looking at me if I'm the only one doing it. Oh, come on. Who cares? I'm going to be the one everyone's looking at anyway. Is that so? <laughs> You're going to be the best superheroine. I picture myself in a costume in front of the whole class. Sure, it's easy to say superheroine, more like super ridiculous. A huge knot formed in my stomach as I thought about it. Actually, I'd prefer not to. I'm not really comfortable. I'll let you think about it, okay? I won't force you to do anything, but just know that, yes? No, nothing. I'm already really happy that we're going together. As we were walking, Armin casually took my hand. It's so weird after all those weeks hiding, but it's not unpleasant. It's anything but. You know, back there, I didn't really get why you felt like you had to lie about Kenneth. <laughs> I knew we'd have to talk about it eventually. I wanted to be sure that Alexei would come. He ended up agreeing to go, so what difference does it make? He likes you and Alexei, so I was sure he would agree to come. Um, let's go A. Okay, but why would you force him? Personally, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Personally, I'd hate it if you dragged me somewhere I didn't want to go. You should talk. You tried forcing Alexei to come this morning. Shoot, you're not wrong. <laughs> exactly. I wanted him to come because I can't stand seeing the two of you angry. I really want things to go back to normal. Still, it would have been easier if Kenton had played along. God, Kenton. <laughs> Armin seemed like he was pouting. Comics aren't really Alexi's thing, you know, and he doesn't seem like he wants to look at me right now. Maybe this is a good time to try and spend some time together after everything that's happened. What if I don't want to? <laughs> don't take it the wrong way, but I'm not sure you understand. Please explain, Armin. Because we're twins, people expect us to be one and the same. And personally, that puts a lot of pressure on me. For instance, no one in is forcing our dear class president to get along with his bratty sister. And luckily so, if I was in his place, I would prefer to commit harakiri. Okay, I don't know what that is, but alright. <laughs> I just can't stand her. Especially after what she put you through this morning. She could have calmed down since Charlotte left, but no. I swear, if she keeps on looking for trouble like that, I'll make sure she regrets it. Oh yeah, we know exactly how you're going to do that, Armin, during the prom episode when you kiss her. <laughs> Believe me, if I had super powers, I'd immediately go and get even with that brat. The most effective thing to do with her is always to ignore her. Well, I never ignore her because I like stirring her up, so let's choose this one. That's what lots of people would do. But try not to turn into the bad guy in this story. You know what they say, with great power comes great responsibility. Of course, they needed to throw that in there somewhere. Anyway, don't forget about me if she gets near you. I'll come to your rescue. You've done a great job so far, Armin. Thank you. We continued talking and ended up in front of my place. We stopped at my front door and Armin kissed me on my forehead. I've got to go now. Duty calls. My hero. Promise me I'll see you again. He pretended to leave, but then walked back. I just remembered that we were so rudely interrupted in the hallway today. This is probably not the best place to do it, but okay. We kissed for a long time until I felt dizzy.
And then my dad opened the door, way too quickly for my taste. He had to leave, but not without hugging me tightly one last time. <laughs> we weren't even in front of my house. We were just randomly in front of the park. Mum and Dad weren't back from work yet. If I'd known, I would have invited Armin in. When I went into my bedroom, I immediately flopped down on the bed. Ugh, I don't have the strength to do my homework tonight. I lied down for a few minutes, staring at the ceiling, when my phone beeped and yanked me out of my daze. It was Rosa. Is everything okay with Armin? Things look tense between you two. Don't start fighting too, or else I won't have any friends left. Sad face. I replied for her not to worry. I replied that things weren't going so great. <laughs> things were fine, but I'm going to choose that one anyway. <laughs> We'd left on a positive note, but several times today he had dismissed mine and Alexa's opinions. That's true. I really don't like how Armin was acting. Her reply was immediate. Oh no, do you want to talk about it? We sent a few texts back and forth, but it was just easier to call. I got up and paced back and forth between my room and the hallway. I can't help but do this when I'm on the phone. So, was that a joke back there or not? About the costumes? <laughs> no, it was really serious. I personally don't really think I'm into it, especially if no one else is doing it. It would be easier if you said yes, for instance. And you're so pretty. You'd look so good in cosplay. Thanks, but I'm going to sit this one out. And <laughs> you'd look really good too. Oh, come on, Rosa. I said no. People already stare at me every day with my style. But that's nothing compared to what Lee sometimes goes through. It's ridiculous when you see how he fills up his stores with customers who love his unique take on fashion. Just last week, some idiots said some things as we were coming out of the movies. They said he, his look isn't manly enough for them because of all the ruffles and lace. What? That's horrible. He's always so calm and he never gets angry, but I was raging. Believe me that I sent them running. And quick, no one touches my Lee. At least he's unique. He doesn't like he doesn't look like all those dude clones and jeans and sneakers you see everywhere. <laughs> if I didn't know any better, I'd think you were talking about Armin, because that's sure what it sounds like. <laughs> a dude clone. Oh no, I'm not talking about him at all. Sure, he has a pretty classic style, but Armin always knows how to have fun when he wants to. Do you remember how excited he was to wear a costume for the play? I think he was one of the only ones not to whine about it, yes. Yeah, he doesn't care about what other people think, and he's right. You shouldn't feel like you should hold back because of what people think. Are you sure you don't want to do it? For Armin, if I was in your shoes and my boyfriend was putting this together, I do think I'd think, I do think I'd think twice about it, or I don't. Deep down, what are you scared of? <laughs> Being ugly. <laughs> Looking ridiculous. For people to think I'm a fake fan. <laughs> You, ugly, I'll remind you about all the boys chasing after you at school. And who knows about the girls, but I wouldn't ask them for fear of starting a riot. No way, I'm not that popular. Not that popular. You're nuts if you actually believe what you're saying. It's going to be fine, I promise. Sure, it's asking a lot of you, but I'm sure that he'll really appreciate it if you join him in this. Well, well, look at Rosa being the voice of reason. In any case... Armin will be there right with you, so you won't be alone. I felt really inspired. Yeah, okay, you're right. Of course, I'm always right. I still hope I can convince some more people. I sense that we're going to have a lot of fun. Oh wow, is it already 8 o'clock? Time flies when you're chatting. I've got to go. See you tomorrow. I hung up. Right. <laughs> with some hesitation, I wrote a text to send to Armin. You can thank Rosa, but okay, I'll do this cosplay with you. The reply was so quick that my phone beeping startled me. He sent me a gif of a dancing panda. Great. You won't regret it. I really hope not. A few minutes later, I went downstairs to have dinner with my parents. I talked to them about the exhibit and the costumes. Mum liked the idea, but Dad tried to talk me out of it. Oh, excuse you. He thinks we're going to make a spectacle of ourselves. Sure, we will be noticed. Oh my god, let your kid have some fun. After all that, I had trouble sleeping. I tried thinking about everything I knew about comics, but I have no idea which character I would be. I hope Armin can help me. I'm sure he can. The next morning, I woke up to the smell of hot pancakes. Dad really knows how to spoil us. 
I was going to be late, so I rushed off with the whole pancake still in my mouth. So graceful. As soon as I saw Armin at school, I reminded him that we need to decide on a costume quickly if we wanted to have one before Saturday. We were sitting against the wall and Rosa came to join us and tugged Armin on his arm. He seems to be in a better mood this morning. Good. Yeah, actually, finding a costume is easier said than done. There are too many co choices for duo costumes. And we still need to have an idea for Ari and me. If it was just the two of us, the choices would be endless. I'm afraid of what you're going to say, but do you have any ideas? Are you joking? I've got tons, like the Winchester Brothers from Supernatural. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? Awesome, sure, but irrelevant. Oh, so you do know a thing or two about comics, do you? Not at all, but Supernatural is a TV series. If you don't know about it, you're really missing out. Oh, don't worry, Rosa. I've got lots of ideas to do with Marvel. For example, Spider-Man and Venom, or Dr. Banner and the Hulk. Armin is already the evil twin every day, so no thanks. <laughs> if I really had to do a duo cosplay with you, I'd be Thor. Well, I'd never be as sexy as Chris Hemsworth, but if dressing up like him would give me some of his charisma, then sign me up. And then Armin, you could be Loki, the god of mischief. You know you'd be perfect for it. Actually, I think I would. Luckily, he didn't seem to notice he was being teased. <laughs> no, don't worry about it, Armin. I'll let Eri choose. Armin looks disappointed, to say the least. No, what would be perfect for me to be Doctor Strange? My favourite. <laughs> really? You think so? What about me? Well, my cape. <laughs> Great. I think I missed something here. Alexei's going to be a cape. Of course, it's a relic that Doctor Strange finds that lets him levitate. His cape can move around by itself, almost like a character on its own, and it's really popular. Yeah, well, not that easy to make a costume out of that. I'd still prefer to be Doctor Strange. No, I thought of it first. God, your idea sucks. I don't want to be a rug. Like always, nothing's ever good enough for you. Why would anyone want to be a cape, Armin? Please. If you actually had a good idea, sure. Well, at least I... Oh, come on, guys. Stop. Stop. You're both overreacting. How is it that you can always find something new to fight about? He's the one who started it. <laughs> what? No, I didn't. You did. And I'll have you know that. Stop. You're worse than children, you know. Anyway, at this rate, we'll never make it before Saturday. We're trying to find something for Armin and Airy, so let's start thinking. We continued talking, but with all the tension in the air, I didn't really feel like we were being very protective. I almost didn't dare to say anything for fear of being taken the wrong way. Rosa kept looking at me with concern, but I admit that I'm just as lost as she is. I think that, like me, she's not used to being in the middle of their arguments. <sighs> we're not making any progress. Eri, you must have some ideas. Um, <laughs> well, what if we did Captain Marvel and Captain America? Superman and Wonder Woman. Diablo and Kitty Pride. Okay. Um, I'm sure that this is going to be something to do with the illustration. And I have seen the illustration. Which makes me think that I'd probably go with A. I guess. Yeah. No, it's just do it. Ah, I know who they are. They're awesome. Thanks, Alexi. We really needed your approval. Oh my god. Armin, stop. See, I can't say anything. Don't. Armin, so we've decided then. Uh, sure. These are well-known characters, and if Eri says yes, then so do I. Perfect. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to touch up my makeup before class starts. Your silly quarrels have given me a headache. See you later. Oh my god, me too. I'm, like, already sick of it. The twins watched Rosa skip off. They both look a bit sheepish. I get it. I don't want to deal with this bickering either. Well, I said that I'd try to find Iris and Priya to try to get them to do cosplay with us. See you in class. They nodded in agreement and I headed off quickly to class. Oh my god, those two are draining. I found Violet, Priya, Kim and Iris talking before class. I'd really like to get them to dress up with us. Oh, hi, Aerie. Yeah, I didn't have time... 
what? I didn't have time to have any breakfast, so I bought in some candy. Help yourself. Oh, great. Breakfast candy. Delicious. Actually, I was thinking of bringing along my little brother's hummus. Yes, bring Thomas. I love Thomas. To the exhibit. He's so funny. My mum's not here and she won't let me leave him alone. Ah, so you don't mind having an ankle biter around? Well, no. Why would that bother me? My brother's nice. He is. I've met him and that little guy's pretty interesting. She's just a bit pre too precocious for his age. Iris told us how Thomas sometimes corrected his teachers, and I brought the conversation gently back to the issue of the costumes. Are you still talking about this? I thought this was Armin's idea. Originally, it was, but I eventually came around. It could be a lot of fun, like an early Halloween. And there must be some comic hero or heroine you do like, right? Haven't you ever wanted to be a hero just for one afternoon? I looked at them in turn, hoping to pick their interest. You play a hard bargain, but a hero? I don't really know much about comic characters, but I've looked into it a bit since talking about it at the cafe. Just as I suspected... Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Just as I suspected, all I found were extremely short, skin-tight costumes like Emma Frost and Red Sonja. And don't get me wrong, I love pretty women, but we're more than just bodies, I hope. I can see what you mean, but things are starting to change in this respect. Look at more recent heroines like Scarlet Witch and Gamora. Oh my god, Gamora, my favourite. They've got other qualities besides their physique. That's true, there are a few of them. I could even agree that in the spirit of equality, the guys aren't too shabby either. There are high standards with heroines, but I know one or two guys who would get an inferiority complex standing next to Chadwick Boseman. Haha. <laughs> when is this set? What year is this set in? Okay. Because <laughs> I thought that this was quite a few years ago, and I'm pretty sure Black Panther came out recently, but all right. Priya's response immediately filled me with hope. You could dress up like a male hero instead of a female heroine if you prefer. It's true, I could. So how about it? Mm, I'm sorry. Even though you've got some good arguments, I'm still not sure. Stop forcing people to do what they don't want to do. Don't be mad. I'll play along for ne next time. For Halloween, for instance. How disappointing. I really thought Priya is so good at declining politely. Actually, it would be cool to dress up like a guy. Oh yeah? Who are you thinking of? No one in particular. This all seems like it would take too much time and effort. You're getting too much into it. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. I looked over at Iris, but she was pretending to be absorbed by the contents of her pencil case. Look, Candy, they really don't want to do it, so stop pushing them. There's only the hardest nut left to crack. I don't suppose that you'd want to, Violet. No, I don't. Just thinking about everyone looking at me makes me want to faint. But you'd be perfect from, for playing Violet from The Incredibles. Exactly. If we all do it, you won't need to worry. I won't force you to do cosplay if you don't want to. I am picking C because this is getting so tiring. Can we stop now? Oh my god. You still need to at least enjoy being the centre of attention. No, she doesn't. She doesn't. Leave her alone. I, I know that's not really a thing. I know you'd understand. Thanks. And, um, sorry. Fine. I couldn't help but sigh. Look at that face you're making. You know... If you want to dress up, we might not want to, but we're not going to judge you for it. You don't need us to play along for you to have fun. Don't be scared. That's easier said than done. I... Oh no, the bell's ringing already. What do we have now again? Mr. Fereza's class. Let's go. <sighs> I got to Mr. Fereza's class. The twins aren't sitting too far apart from each other, but not at the same table. There are some seats left and I could sit next to one of them, hoping that for once they can last an hour without getting worked up. Do we have to choose who to sit by? Oh god, no. <laughs> sit next to Alexi, sit next to Armin. I'm going to sit next to Alexi, because why not? We're in the back of the class, not where the most serious students sit, but I've already lost any interest in paying attention. After a few minutes, I started fiddling with my pen, not taking any notes, but my neighbour wasn't doing any better. At least he's keeping a low profile compared to a while ago. Ugh, this is so boring, right? You said it. The economics of the South American mines will put anyone to sleep. I heard Rosa in front of me. 
not a class, more like a boredom survival test. I couldn't help letting out a laugh. It lightened the mood and we started whispering with each other while trying to keep from being noticed. Even Armin couldn't resist for too long and he joined in. The matter of the exhibit was brought up again. Oh my god, I don't want to hear it. How are you guys going to buy your costumes? Do you know any stores in town that sell them? Why buy them when we can make them ourselves? Great. Um, what? Last time I checked, you weren't all that great at arts and crafts. The most important thing is having ideas, and I've got lots of those. As for the execution, I'll remind you that I can count on our expert designer. I suppose you're talking about Rosa. Of course. Who else but little talented old me? Armin already asked me, and I said yes. This is to make up for not wanting to dress up with you guys, and I'd never miss an opportunity to design a few looks. It feels like I haven't done that in a thousand years, and I'm just itching to do it. That's the spirit I'm looking for. But are we all going to have time before the exhibit? It wasn't exactly on the schedule. Let's just say that we've got a full schedule, but with good organisation and lots of helping hands, I can do it. Let's see. I'm going to need everyone's measurements. Pick out the fabrics and then put, the, put together the costume. And of course, do a little shopping to get the props we can't make ourselves. Okay, but remind me, what are you doing in all this, Armin? <laughs> Good question. Like I said, I'm going to supervise. Actually, you're going to have to do more than that if everything is going to be ready on time. Ari made a good point. What I mean is that I'll have the pleasure of teaching both of you the basics of sewing. Great. Awesome. I've always wanted to learn. Shh, quiet down. Are you serious, Armin? Totes. Sewing will be super useful. Be a super useful skill during a zombie attack. Uh, sure. <sighs> we can never be serious with you. What about you, Alexi? Would you mind learning? I feel like I don't have a choice, but if it's going to keep you up at night, I've already helped Rosa with the costumes for the play, and I remember two or th three things from that. But I'm warning you. You can use my sewing machine, but I'm pretty sure my parents won't want us doing this in the house. We're doing renovations right now and the place is a mess. Darn, that would have made things a lot easier. Our parents won't either. Not after all the drama Armin caused by getting arrested. They're already letting him go out this weekend, but we shouldn't push it. Yeah, well, we don't need to bring that up again. You're not saying much, Aerie. Please save the day. Yeah, I seem to remember that your parents are pretty cool. <laughs> Have you met my parents? Okay, no, my mum's cool, but have you met my dad? Um, I don't know who you're confusing me with, but <laughs> my father is really strict and our place is kind of small. Oh, so we're screwed then. I can ask, but I can't promise anything. Well, let's not worry about things and we can just buy something ready-made. That's fine too, right? Yeah, no. I just heard what I was saying and as a true cosplayer, I can't pretend that it would be the same thing. It would be a shame. If you're a true cosplayer, Armin, wouldn't you already have a costume? Sorry, I couldn't help overhearing your conversation. She's sitting two seats back from Rosa. <laughs> We're being a lot louder than I thought. I'd really like to help out. And also, I've got the house to myself this week. Wow, Iris, you're our guardian angel. You mean to say she's really kind. We thanked Iris warmly for her help and we started getting organised to meet up at her place tonight. Unfortunately, we had to quickly cut our conversation short because Mr. Ferreira lost his patience and asked us to be quiet. After that, the school day finished up a bit too quietly for my taste, but we finished early. Rosa can go get a sewing machine for our first improvised sewing session. Oh, doesn't this ju just sound so exciting? A sewing session. <laughs> Great. Iris got started early, cleaning up her place before we got there. As for the twins, they went off to get drinks and the material Rosa asked for. Iris gave me her address again, just in case. I need to go through the park. I am I found the address with no problem. When I rang, Iris opened the door immediately, like she was just standing behind the door waiting. I followed her into the living room. Armin had already arrived. Oh, Iris's house is so cute. And he looked like he was in deep conversation with Thomas, Iris's little brother. So, to sum up the idea, basically, there were two main opposing figures in the fight for African Americans' rights. Martin Luther King advocated non-violence to fight for equal rights, while Malcolm X fought by promoting the idea of by any means necessary, borrowing Jean-Paul Sartre's yep, motto. I see, but what does that have to do with the X-Men? 
There's a, oh, okay, there's a fairly obvious parallel in how they defend mutants' rights. This, this guy is too smart for his own good, I swear. Professor X represents Martin Luther King, and Magneto represents Malcolm X. Oh, of course, that's awesome. We already talked plenty about this history in class. I'm going to wait for Rosa. She should be here soon. Iris slipped away. She must be used to having long debates with Thomas. I don't mind all that much, even though the guys barely seemed to notice I was there. I don't agree with Iris. History would be way more interesting if they taught it like you do. Thank you. If you're interested, that's not the only parallel between history and comics, actually. You! How dare you! Oh my god, <laughs> what's going on? We all jumped. No one had heard Alexi arriving. He rushed towards Armin in a rage. Rosa came in right then and stared at them aghast, but Iris was nowhere to be seen. Oh no, not again. It looks like you got here right on time. I can see that. I barely took off my backpack and things are already out of hand. Looking for our biological parents was one thing. I can look past that. But going through my things and taking my stuff, are you serious? Um, what are you talking about? Don't act all innocent. You know very well what you took. Are you talking about this? Armin took out a piece of red and white fabric from his bag. Give it back! Alexi tried to snatch the fabric, but Armin jumped back to keep out of reach. Hold up, explain this to me. I found it before I left, lying on the floor in the bathroom, so what's so special about it? What a liar! It was in my room, and you must have gone through my things and stolen it. No, I didn't. I... First of all, why did you take it? What is it? Well, I was looking through the house to find stuff that could help us make the costumes, and I found this piece of material that would be perfect for my belt. Unbelievable. You really don't remember anything. That's mine, so give it back now. No problem. Sorry. How am I supposed to know what this thing is? We'll talk about this later. We've already made enough of a scene. Alexi grabbed Armin's arm and led him to the kitchen. Who's he? The mean brother. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> mean brother. I was having fun talking with Armin. If anyone needs me, I'll be in my room. <laughs> Alright, bye. Well, that leaves the two of us. I think Iris is cleaning up to make room for us to work. What can we do about those two? Things obviously aren't working out on their own. We need to do something. I get so sad seeing my boyfriend and my best friend fighting. Thankfully, I've got my sweet Liam Lissand. Well, aren't you lucky? I've never seen them fighting, but I get it. I don't know if I'd be that patient if I had a twin sister. And I'm not sure I could handle two roses. Definitely not. Hey, I'm kidding. Not. I hope so. Yep. <laughs> so, let's get back to Armin and Alexi. Guess what? I already have a plan. Wow. Do tell. Step one. We go into the kitchen with them and we don't let them leave until they make up. That's the only step, isn't it? Okay, no. <laughs> step two. They'll need to learn to stand each other. We're going to have a million things to do in the next few days. Take measurements, go shopping for props, pick out fabric. Lots of time for them to spend together, but we're going to fudge things a bit and make sure they do everything just the two of them. In order to avert a disaster, I suggest that we switch off so that there's always one of us present. Try and get them to quit being so stubborn. Assuming we can get past step one first, but okay. I'm not sure we need to resort to military tactics just yet. Um, let's go for this one. I never promised things would be easy, soldier. But don't worry, I'm sure it'll work. Aren't you tired of these constant fights too? Oh, you bet. By the way, what was the deal with that piece of fabric? It seemed like a pretty big deal. I have absolutely no idea. I really don't. <laughs> oh, well, we'll find out soon enough. Ready for the next step in our plan then? Follow me. Let's go and do something I really don't want to do, but all right. Iris still hasn't come back. Poor thing. After all her help, it's pretty lame that the twins got into a fight after the Billy just arrived. Well, you've got to go. I followed Rosa into the kitchen. The twins were far from finishing their squabble, and Alexi was holding on tight to the thing in the centre of their argument. What could it be? I'm really worried as to what it is. You're impossible. What am I supposed to do? Just guess what you're thinking. I only ask that you think about it from my point of view for a second. Would that kill you, honestly? Don't you ever remember seeing the blanket that... Okay, it's a blanket. Hey guys, just calm down, okay? Rosa raised her hands to try and calm things down. Armin and Alexi turned towards her, furious. 
If the situation wasn't so tense, Armin would have surely said something about how she looked like the trainer trying to calm down the raptors in Jurassic World. Yeah, okay, what year is this set in? <laughs> I'm really curious. Thinking of this made me smile. Or is it, I don't mean to be rude, but could you butt out just this once? This is between me and him. Wow, please, Rosa, let's go. Leave him to sort it out. Honestly, I'm sick of this already. You're just saying that because you don't want anyone else knowing how paranoid you are. No, I don't want to talk about it. Anyway, what I get out of this is that you like stealing my stuff. Come on, Alexi. I'm sure that Armin didn't do it on purpose. I don't know what this thing is, but you said you found it in the bathroom, right? That's what I've been trying to say, but don't bother. He's just being stubborn today. So then, Alexi, if Armin found it by chance, then technically he didn't steal anything, did he? I see that you don't know him as well as I do. He's a liar. He went into my room. This is so tiring. Oh my god. That's it. I'm getting sick of it now. You know what, Alexi? I did go into your room. <gasps> you lied. But it doesn't matter because I did... Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, he didn't lie. But it doesn't matter because I did actually find this thing in the bathroom. Oh my god. What? Are you being serious? Um, Armin surely had a good reason to go into your room. At least, I hope so. Yeah, I was looking for batteries for my console, but I didn't find any. But what difference does it make? I'm your brother. I should be able to go into your room. No way. Never. I can't believe it. You have no respect for my privacy. Because you have something you're trying to hide. That's none of your business. I, um... Can this be over? Can this be over already? I'm sick of this argument. Well, if anyone needs me, I'll be cooling off outside. I can't stand looking at him. Go ahead, be a diva. Thanks a lot, ladies. Whoa! Alexi went out to the patio and Armin stormed off into the hallway. I started to follow them, but Rosa had turned so pale that it stopped me in my tracks. Uh, what just happened? We already made things worse, didn't we? Just watch. All because of my stupid plan and they won't want to speak to each other, ever. Oh wow, I suck. Is this really the best time for that right now? The situation would have gotten worse in any case. It's their fault! You were just trying to help! Yes, let's do this one. You're being too kind with me, but I need to acknowledge when I screw up when it's necessary. It wasn't a good idea. It's not your fault, trust me. Alexi was right, I should have minded my own business. They would have killed each other. <laughs> These two clearly have things to work out, but fighting over a scrap of cloth, seriously. That seems strange to me as well. I feel like Alexi's anger towards Armin runs deeper than it might appear, like there's something he's not saying. If we really want to help, I think the best thing would be to go and see them individually and listen to what they have to say. If we can unravel their stories, we might be able to get them to make up. I'm sure you want to go find your boyfriend. I'll go and see Alexi if so. I don't know. <laughs> I hate having to choose between them. Or the other way around. I don't mind. As you wish. Um, go see Armin or Alexi. Let's go see Armin. I think he went this way. Um, can I come in or are you going to rip my head off as well? If it's only you, yes. I don't want to see anyone else. I entered with some hesitation. Armin still seems on edge. He's such an idiot sometimes. Makes me mad. He barges in screaming at me. I just don't know what he was going on about. Do you really have no idea what made him so angry? It's not like Alexi to get so upset over nothing. Well, no, I don't know. Why? Are you accusing me of something too now? <gasps> oh my god, stop. Not at all. I believe you. Don't worry. I'm just trying to understand why Alexi is so angry. Well, it's because of what I bought over for the costumes. The striped cloth. Yeah, it seems pretty important to him. Like all his clothes, right? We're not on the same wavelength so on that at all. It seems so absurd to me. You're right. No one gets that upset over clothes. Unless he's just freaking out from hanging around you so much. Hey, I thought you came to talk because you were on my side. Oh, please, I'm not on anyone's side. At least I made him smile a little. That's a really weird accessory, though. I don't see how he could wear it. He said it was a blanket. It looks like a blanket. A pretty small one at that. It's obviously a baby blanket. Maybe something he had when you were little. I would have remembered it. We shared everything back then. Armin. Are you okay? You just figured it out, didn't you? I know what it is. I can remember now. What an idiot. I'm so stupid. It's a baby blanket. Yes. Yeah, so how does that help us? 
Well, it's a long story. Let me explain. <laughs> oh, God, make it short. Make it short. <laughs> Personally, I don't remember our biological parents at all. Alexi doesn't either. We were really little when our parents took us in. Around the end of elementary school, Alexi went through a phase where he tried to find out more about the parents we never knew. I remember that he got really angry because our parents wouldn't say much about them. They didn't want to admit they didn't actually know anything. I can't tell you how disappointed he was when our mother showed him a single box of keepsakes. Things belonging to your biological parents. More like things they had bought before we were born, like bottles, small plush toys, things like that you see. It's only been a few days since the twins found out about their biological parents' death. I can't even imagine what it's like. I held Armin's hand and interlaced our fingers. At the time, I wasn't that interested in it. Alexei played with his stuff for a while, but then he got over it. I thought that he'd gotten over our biological parents since then. I guess I was wrong, since he's kept that little blanket in his room. This was a lot of news all at once, what with the, with the arrival of Evan and everything. Yeah, it's pretty clear to me. I need to talk to him about it. He got up with a determined look, and standing in the doorway, he blew me a kiss. And you, you're just the best. Well, don't I know it. I joined the others in the living room. Rosa and I exchanged a knowing smile, and we finally explained the situation to Iris. Poor Iris, she just invited us to her house, and now look what's going on. Armin and Alexi talked for a long time before coming to join us. I don't know what they said, but as they came in, they looked emotional and content. I was relieved to see them like this. During the next few days, everything happened really quickly while we were preparing for the exhibit. We met up almost every night of the week at Iris's place, and she really helped us out a lot. Things were also much easier now that the twins had worked things out. We had a really good laugh when Alexi tried teaching Armin how to use the sewing machine. Luckily, Rosa could sew fast for damage control. The night before the exhibit, I went to bed anxious to see the final results. I woke up from a pretty restless sleep. I glanced at the time. It's not that early. Rosa will be here soon. After a quick shower, I heard a commotion in the living room. Oh, I didn't do it by myself. Eri did most of the work, and we had a lot of help. Pretty impressive for a bunch of teens. Her father is better at that kind of thing than I am. I couldn't sew a button without ending up in the hospital. Ah, Eri, there you are. I was just showing your costume to your mother. Go and try it on real quick. Uh, right here in the middle of the living room? She said go and try it. Not try it on here. Come on, honey. I'm the one who made you. Don't be shy. <laughs> wow, okay. You're not going to sneak off now, are you? No, but let me breathe a little. Come on, I can't wait to see it. I rushed back to my room to try on the costume in peace. I took off my clothes and put on the costume Rosa had made for me. Okay, okay, cool. This is cool. I don't really know about that belt, but all right. <laughs> I went back to the living room and mummed me, mum beamed with delight. It's not uncomfortable to wear, but it's a little revealing. What? What are you revealing? Couldn't you have changed the design to cover up a little better? What are you revealing? Or do you just mean it's form-fitting? I don't know. What? Now I know everyone will see almost all of me. Uh, are we looking at the same costume? I'm confused. What are you talking about, dear? You and your friend have done a great job. The cut is just perfect. She spun me around a few times to look at me from every angle. I'm still so confused. It's really tight fitting. Okay, is that what you meant? I can't help picturing everyone staring at me from head to toe once I go outside. Will I be able to stand all those eyes looking at me? You're so cute. That brings me back at least 10 years. You, loved, you used to love dressing up when you were little. Ding dong. <laughs> Are you expecting any other friends? Um, I don't think so. Actually, ma'am, if you would allow me... Surprisingly, Rosa got up and left the room to open the front door. Good morning, my dears. What the? <laughs> Dad's mouth hung open. He looked like he'd seen a ghost. Well, Philip, don't you want to compliment her? She made it all by hand with her friends. Apparently, it's from a comic strip. Ah, yes. I remember you telling us about it. So, you're going to a costume party? Uh, no, Dad. I'm going to an exhibit. I looked down to, to, look, to look at our handiwork again. I'm not sure Dad's fully on board. Who cares what he thinks? You'll probably call me old-fashioned once again, but I think it's really tight, isn't it? Philip, you're not going to start controlling how she dresses, are you? 
this year. I don't want to force her to wear such and such clothing, but I'm just worried about our daughter. Aerie, people aren't always so open-minded or have the best intentions. I'm just asking you to watch out for yourself, please. <sighs> Here we go. <laughs> don't worry, sir. I won't let her out of my sight, even if I have to go and freshen up. Rosa grabbed me by the arm. She's in good hands, Meg. In any case, well done. It looks like you spent a lot of time on it. Suddenly, I was surprised by a familiar voice coming from the front door. Hey, hi, Rosa. Is she serious? Did she really? Where's his costume? <laughs> hi, Aerie. Good morning, ma'am. Sir, I hope I'm not bothering you. I don't believe it. I don't think Armin has seen my parents since, well, since we've been together. I'm already flipping out about the thought of Dad and Armin in the same room together, but now Armin's there with his costume. I didn't see a costume. The situation is too absurd for me to react. Sometimes my life is like one of those sitcoms with a laugh track. Sorry, lovely, but I thought you'd chicken out, so I brought in some backup. Don't worry about it, young man. Actually, now I can admire these fabulous costumes. You're going to be a hit. So, Armin, is it? I don't think I've heard much about you because I've got a teenage box of secrets in the house, but I have a sneaking suspicion that you're here for my daughter. She winked at him. Mum. <laughs> you can tell me things from time to time, especially if you have a serious boyfriend. It's not your boyfriend, is it? This is your boyfriend? <laughs> Why am I the last one to find out of these things? <laughs> Do we really have to have this discussion right here, right now? I'm just teasing, poor thing. I don't actually know anything about him. Um, well, I'll wait outside then. <laughs> Well, so will I. I'm leaving. Help, run, quick. Wait, we could invite him over for dinner sometime so we can get to know each other better. He simply has to have a taste of your father's cooking. I quickly gathered my things and dashed outside. I think I'd prefer to be stared at by strangers outside than by these two. I ran out the door and joined up with Rosa and Armin, who were waiting for me on the sidewalk across the street. Ooh, say you weren't kidding. Things are really lively, lively at your house. Yeah, and thanks to who? I wish we could have avoided that. <laughs> That's great. But don't worry, you're not the one who has to endure a dinner like the Spanish Inquisition. Oh, sorry, but they'd have to meet Armin one day in any case. At least we got you to go outside. Come on, we have to meet up with Lee and the others at the park. <laughs> All right. As we approached the park, more and more people passed by started staring at Armin and me. I'd never wish so hard that I could turn invisible. Some people really do have a staring problem sometimes. I feel like I just landed from another planet. At least I looked like my I looked just like my character. We passed in front of a group of young people around our age. One of them pointed at us and said something I couldn't hear, but I could clearly see the others stifling their laughter. I can't stand it. I don't know if I can make it to the exhibit venue at this rate. I should go back home. <laughs> no. After all, I shouldn't have to force myself to endure this if I don't want to. No way I'll let their jazz get to me. That's because it's fun. I took a deep breath and I took Armin by the hand to gain, to gain some courage. When he's with me, anything seems possible. We finally get to the park and seem to be the first ones there. The others arrived gradually. Wow, Aerie, you're gorgeous. <gasps> Me? That suits you very well, Aerie. If you didn't already have a date, I'd ask you to be mine. Aww. Looking good, Armin. You almost make me regret not dressing up too. <laughs> almost. <laughs> you guys look great together. Come on, stop. I already feel foolish. Huh? No, go on. Oh my god, he's actually wearing it! <laughs> yes, okay, this is cool. Ha, no, go on. I worked hard to look this good. It's time to show it off to everyone then. We all laughed and headed to the ex off to the exhibit space. There were a lot of us by now, so it was impossible to miss us moving down the street. When we arrived at the exhibit, I thought we'd lose sight of one another because of the crowd of people, but Armin held onto my hand tightly. It's as if Rosa had told him what my father had said. It was a successful exhibit. There were so many people. After waiting in a long line, we finally arrived at the ticket booth. Pay ten gold, all right. Whoa, it's even bigger than I expected. Oh, I like the background. That is really cool. Hey, don't run off. You're going to get separated. Well, we're never going to all stay together. There are too many of us. It's okay. As long as no one ends up alone, we can just break up into small groups and then meet at the exit. Good idea. That way we can each move at our own speed. We quickly split into small groups. I'd better pick one. 
Okay, go with the well, there's so many people, but I'm obviously gonna go with Army, I suppose. Yeah, let's do it. Oh wow, look at that. No wait, look at that. <laughs> Over there. Oh, that's so cool. I can't tell if he's being adorable or really weird. Welcome to the hell I've been living since birth. Haha. <laughs> well, I've made up my mind. Hey, is everything okay, Violet? Oh sure, don't worry about me. I think I'm going to stay back a bit. I brought along my sketchbook to do some drawing. Have fun then, see you later. We continued tagging along with Armin, who was becoming even giddier. We continued on into the exhibit, but eventually I thought I fell behind the group. Luckily, I spotted the others ahead of me. I can't believe I lost them. I promised my dad I'd pay attention. As I tried to find them again, two enormous bad guy costumes caught my eye. I walked up to Thanos. I walked up to Ultron. Oh my god, I don't know. Ah, let's go Thanos, because he was more of the bad guy. Looking at them close up. Up close. The Affinity Stones are actually beautiful. This must be one of the most memorable bad guys from the Avengers movies. I started reading the descriptive plaque when I heard some voices behind me. You're really nice, you know. We can go get an ice cream after this. My treat. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> what a little flirt. <laughs> it's adorable. But I'm being serious. <laughs> there you are. I lost sight of the others. Iris isn't with you? I haven't seen her since. Oh yeah, there she is. We finally met up at the exit. It looked like everyone had a good time. As we were leaving the space, I saw they had a little shop set up in the corner where you could buy souvenirs. The others had already left, but I could ask Armin to come with me to look around. Go to the shop, please. Oh, wait. Oh, my God. Um, go to the shop. There aren't many people here, so we could take our time looking at everything. There are two shelves filled with comics, of course, plus entire collections of all sorts of figurines. At a clothing rack, some kids are carefully choosing some superhero costumes. They're less detailed than ours, but they're still pretty good. Armin went off to pick up some rolls containing movie posters. I wonder if I could find something here he might like. I went towards the kitchen where <laughs> I went towards the figurines. I went towards the CDs and DVDs. Um, figurines, I guess? There are all sorts of styles jumbled up in this section. Some of the figurines have an almost Japanese style with large eyes, while others are fairly realistic. One thing's for sure, they're all pretty expensive. I mean, this Wolverine one with all his claws out is incredible, but it's way outside my teenage budget. I was about to leave when a few boxes unlike the others caught my attention. I don't really get what this old man with a moustache is doing here with all these superhero figurines. He must be some character I've never heard of. Reading the back of the box, I finally get it. This is Stan Lee, a comic book legend. How did I not recognise him? His name is plastered everywhere in the exhibit. There's even a wall dedicated to him with his motto, Excelsior, written in big letters at the top. Lots of people are in front of it, drawing or writing a message. It's touching how some people can bring others together in a community. In any case, it's a fitting tribute to his work, and I'm sure Armin will like it. Buy the Stan Lee figurine now for another gift. Leave the shop. Sure, let's buy it. I discreetly went to the register so I could surprise Armin. I hid the bag with my purchase as best as I could behind my back and skipped up to Armin. It's still packed with people outside. There are lots of families waiting in line to get in. I felt something pulling on the scarf around my waist and I turned around. Only then did I realise that there were about a dozen kids following us. One of them was pulling on my costume. <laughs> Cute. They can't be any older than eight years old. Uh, what's going on? <laughs> They must think we're the actual Captain American. American? <laughs> and Captain Marvel. Cute, isn't it? I just realised he has a cupcake on his shield. <laughs> kids can be so naive. <laughs> Sorry, kids. And how old are you then? I happen to be far more mature than other kids my age. While we talked, the children gathered around us. They seemed to be waiting for us to do something. Are you coming, Aerie? I can't let down my public or become fans. Come on, it'll only take five minutes. What do you want us to do? Violet, don't you have a black marker in your case? Uh, um, yes, I always have my art supplies with me. Here you go. Perfect. Now, who wants Captain America's autograph? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> there was a mini skirmish as the children pushed to be the first one to get an autograph. I wonder what Captain Marvel would do. Maybe I'm not completely comfortable, but it might be fun. I don't know about Captain Marvel. <laughs> Marvel? 
fucking marble. <laughs> but I'm not all that comfortable improvising. Oh, sure, let's go for it. While Arwen was signing anything within reach, some of the kids asked me to take a selfie with them. They seemed so happy to meet their hero. Sometimes I'd like to go back to such an innocent age. Armin really stuck to the role and did a few poses with his shield. They seemed to like it and they all cheered him on. We seem to be attracting even more people. In any case, I can see that Armin is being really patient with them. I didn't know he was so good with children. After about 20 minutes of fame, we finally joined up with the others who were waiting for us patiently to go home. Ignoring the kids who were still rallying behind us, Armin leaned in and kissed me. Wow, look at that, sis. That's crazy. So that means that in the movie, Captain Marvel and Captain America will end up together. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> I felt my cheeks reddening. Calm down, you two. We're going to start a riot. Today was strange. I'd never have thought my brother loved Bane so much. Oh, come on. You know you'd have fun, too. No, you actually handled it great. The kids seem to be in heaven. But don't you guys want to lose them in the park? They seem like they really want to follow us. We'll follow you. We were finally able to get away from the small crowd of overexcited children. I had a taste of the life of a star. It was fun, but how exhausting. Who would have thought that there would be so much energy in such little bodies? As soon as I thought I could deal with one, another one came and took their place. It's not easy trying to make everyone happy. We sat down on the grass and started talking again about the exhibit for a good while. I think I can finally relax now. I somehow even forget I'm wearing a costume. And it's about time now that the day is coming to an end. Our friends started going home one by one. And finally, only Rosa, Lee, Armin, Alexi and myself were left. Armin was talking with Alexi, then came over to lie down on his back near me. So, the exhibit wasn't as awful as you thought it might be, was it? I was never really against going, but the costumes, on the other hand. Let's just say that I had a lot of doubt, but in the end, it was worth it. I was surprised at how well we were received. I wasn't that surprised. I knew you could handle it. By the way, you little sneak. Did you think I didn't see you getting me a gift at the gift shop? <laughs> I forgot all about that. He caught me. Who said it was for you? What? <laughs> just kidding. Here you go. I took the gift out of my bag. Oh, good old Stanley. How meta it is having a figurine of him. I love it. Superheroes in New York. Give me a break. That guy is a legend. Even those who have never picked up a comic book know who he is because he's got cameos in every Marvel movie. Thank you, Erin. He gave me a big hug. I'm happy I gave him a souvenir of this day. I wonder what the other gifts were, but okay. Now your turn. He handed me a small package, which I immediately opened. Oh, thank you, Armin. What is it? What is it? This clutch goes perfectly with my cosplay. Rosa came over to join us too. All right, Captain Comics clutch. Let me look at this. Okay, cute. It does suit the outfit well. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Rosa came over to join us too. Hey, in all the fuss, we didn't even take a picture of your beautiful costumes. We shouldn't miss this, opportun this opportunity, should we? Oh no, Rosa, leave us alone. Come on, Eri, don't you want a little souvenir? Well, okay. I smiled as I stood next to Armin while Rosa took out her phone to take a picture. And don't forget to strike an awesome pose, eh? Uh, what kind of pose? Who cares? Just make something up. Pose with your hands on your hips. Make a peace sign. Take a fighting stance. Um, see, I guess? I raised my fist like a superheroine ready to fight to the finish. Come on, show me your fighting faces. She's the superheroine everyone needs. She is, you didn't just say superhero, you know. She's just come back from saving Sweden Morris from a pending danger from the blonde menace. <laughs> it's Captain Eerie. Watch out, blonde menace. By the power of the moon, I'll show you. Ha ha ha, whatever, Eerie. <laughs> Thanks. You're always ready to follow me along on my adventures, no matter what they are. That's why I love you. Huh? What did you just say? I don't think I heard him right. Did he just tell me he loved me in front of everyone? Well, yeah, I'm sure you knew that by now. I'm crazy about you. I love you. Aw. Rosa took the picture right at that moment. Like an echo, I heard her whistle and say something to us, but nothing else mattered except Armin. I'm captivated by his face. Oh, wow. I actually did get the illustration. Okay. <laughs> I'm so surprised. What did you just say to me? He continued with a lowered voice, just for me this time. I know that sometimes I don't always think of everything. I don't open up a lot, and I tend to prefer video games over people. 
but you're a thousand times more interesting than all those NPCs I come across every day. When I'm with you, I feel good. I hope I make you just as happy because you just make me feel great. I'm so stunned by the surprise declaration of love that I take a few seconds to reply. I love you too. Even though I don't feel ready to say it back. <laughs> we can't leave him hanging, so I guess we'll just do it. I know you often seem like you're living in your own world, but I see how hard you try to make me a part of it, and that makes me so happy. I want to be a part of your world, Armin. I put my hand on his chest and kissed him on the lips. I could never be happier than at this moment. The whistles and applause from my friends yanked me back to reality. Oops, we sure were putting on a show. We stepped back from each other, slightly embarrassed, but Armin kept holding my hand. We took a few more pictures. Then, I went back to lying down in the grass. I want to enjoy the warm sunshine a little while longer in peace. Rosa and Alexi heard everything Armin had said. Alexi kept teasing his brother, who still had plenty of comebacks despite how tired he was. The day had been so full of emotions that I ended up falling asleep in the grass, curled up in Armin's embrace. Mum came into my room and woke me from my daydream. So, dear, getting along with your cleaning? Oh, that's right. I was like, what's going on? Was that all just a dream? <laughs> no. What? What's all this? There's even more of a mess than before. Is this a new way of cleaning up horizontally, spreading out all your clothes on the floor? Sorry, Mum. I found a few souvenirs and I couldn't help but... A teenager overcome by nostalgia. Now I've heard everything. Come on, let's get to it. Up, up. She left and I carefully folded the Captain Marvel costume. Just think, I was wearing this for the first time when Armin said he loved me. With such a peculiar boyfriend, that moment sure was special. I shook my head in dismay at the pile of clothes lying before me. If I ever want to see Armin and my friends again, I'd better get to it. Finish this bin up. All right, there we have it. Oh, that was long. <laughs> that was long. I have to admit that up until the point where we actually got to the exhibit, I really didn't like how the episode was going. I was getting so frustrated with Alexi and Armin just arguing the whole time. And I don't know, Armin's attitude most of the time just really bugged me. But, I mean, getting to the exhibit and everything after that was pretty cute, I suppose. Um, yeah. I guess I don't really have too much else to say about it. I do still feel a little bit, su you know, well, surprised and confused by these spin-offs. I don't really see the point in them apart from getting in I love you but anyway I guess it's fun for people to play through so that is Armin's spin-off I will leave the video here please remember to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one bye